Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Zero to 60. Today we are gonna be fitting the cheapest auto trans cooler we can to the budget 335. We've gone with this one uh, because it was the cheapest. Very cheap, very cheap kit. Yeah. <laughs> Basically the cheapest bar and plate style intercooler, uh, intercooler, trans cooler we could get. Uh, I will put a link to this down in the description. Uh, one thing that we're not sure on is if it's gonna fit, because it is quite big. It is bigger than uh, the BMS one. Yes, yeah, so you were saying the it's the same number of cores as the BMS, but slightly longer. Correct. And unfortunately, the house or the, the spot for them on these 335s doesn't allow that much space. So I might have to pull this front bar. Yeah, I was trying to make the thumbnail look cool. Uh, while Dave's getting ready to show you what we've sort of worked out. Now, we got this, I think this was around 60 Australian dollars for the trans cooler, which is Realistically, not enough money. Um, I don't know why these guys sell everything so cheap. And I also bought this hose fitting kit. Now, this was around $110. It came with five meters of dash 10 hose uh, and then 10 dash 10 fittings. Now, I wanted to go with this so that I had a few options once we worked out how we're going to fit everything. And I also figured I might be able to use the leftover hose to upgrade the factory engine oil cooler as well. So. They it's might get to use, they might get used later on. Well, it's pretty cool because you were saying all the BMS, the BMS kits just have straight fittings. Oh, oh, I remember seeing a picture a little while ago. Oh, sorry, they, they, have, they have a U-bend bend and... To come from there, but because this one's gonna be such a squeeze in its, in its home, it looks like we're gonna have to mount it that way with the fittings pointing towards the engine. Um, and because of that, it's useful having all the different fittings because you can pick and choose for what's going to be best. Absolutely. Now, although this is going to be a, probably about half the price of buying the BMS one, we've already spent about half an hour <laughs> trying to work out how to make it fit. So it's not, it's not just straightforward, but hopefully we might have a bit of a guide when you're finished. The thing that did bump up the price of the way I'm doing this are these fittings here. Now, these are the black market parts, factory trans cooler to dash eight style, dash eight, um, Dash eight fittings, sorry, I forgot what they're called. Um, now these are around 39 or 40 US dollars each and you do need two of them. So that does ramp up the price a fair bit. And because my kit is dash 10, I then had to buy dash eight to dash 10 adapters. But these were, I think $2 each or something. They might be a dollar each, next to nothing. And I will double check the price on them because as I've said, $80 US, that does sound horrifically expensive, but they could be right. Yeah, so it looks like this uh, headlight bracket here, it is just a big piece of plastic molding that houses the headlight washer as well and sort of helps keep the headlight into the vehicle. So that's a pretty good mounting point for this outer, this outer mounting bracket on the cooler. So we'll just have to... We're hoping with some rubber spaces or might have to machine up something. And by machine, I mean bend some soft in. aluminium. <laughs> um, might even be able to bend the end of the the trans cooler to, to mate up with this surface on the inside. Yeah, it shouldn't be too hard to get it fixed to that point there. And then that sort of, that squeezes it right up against that brake duct. Um, you can see the holes here from the splash plate of where, Sorry. where the splash plate goes or when the, how the front bar will cover it up. And that there on the, on the bar, there is actually a little drop as well. So that should be enough for that to just house inside with a bit of space at the bottom and at the side, a little bit of room at the front does get too close we can just cut that off there as well to give us another 10 to 15 mil true and then at the top it does uh, it's pretty close to the chassis rail so with the 45 degree bend that actually points the hose down just enough that we'll be able to run the hose down, down the through rail. that gap around the new intercooler piping I'll and be able to see just up under here and then up into the um into where the original Trans cooler is. Yeah, and basically what we're hoping, if my lovely workshop light's gonna stay there, uh, that should then allow us to bring the factory hoses just up over through that gap there, above the factory trans cooler, up around the fan shroud and down to connect to these factory fittings in here. It actually doesn't look too bad. The only thing we're still not sure of yet, or it's gonna be a little bit tight, is when once the fan shroud is back in, um, but when you're running all the, all the hoses before, it actually looks like it's, there's going to be a little bit of room or plenty of room to make it all, to make it work. I think, I think we've just got to start working and just try see and if we can make it work. We're, we're probably not going to film us struggling and trying a hundred different things because I reckon it might take a couple of goes. But once we've got a solution that's sort of in place, we'll give you guys an update. Cool. We have basically worked out how we're going to mount the cooler. 100% and it's going to go definitely up in here. 
and it sits tight up against the edge of the headlight bracket and we've just bent it away from the ballast so there's clearance there. The lower hose will rub up against this air duct and we actually mounted up that bottom piece. We've definitely got all the clearance we need for the cooler. However, where we've run into trouble is the cooler lines. Now, on the good kits that you buy, they do come with adapters to lock off the original trans cooler. I was going to leave the coolant running through the factory heat exchanger and basically just leave it in place. But the problem with that is, there's no room to get the lines from the trans cooler into the trans cooler lines. If you come and have a look up top, um, really the only way we can do it with a factory cooler in place is one hose running under the bottom to the bottom transmission line and then one hose coming up through here. And although we could do that, I really, I just wasn't comfortable having a, a line, which is basically we're going to have to go there. It doesn't quite look right, does it? No, and it's just, it's just, it also, if you ever have to remove the thermo fan, that will be nearly impossible without removing that first. So I think before we go any further, we're going to have to make up some bungs and actually delete the factory heat exchanger. So. It's no longer yesterday. <laughs> that was a bit of a shitty day. Didn't go to plan. No. Uh, famous last words that you would have heard at the start of this video. We weren't sure how we were going to go for space once the fan shroud was fitted. And I hopefully I got some clips, but basically with the factory heat exchanger for the transmission in place, there was no way we were going to have enough room. Um, we tried routing the cooler lines in two or three different spots. We tried trimming this down. And it was all because I, we didn't have bungs to bung the, the coolant line. Yeah, and unfortunately it was just too late yesterday. All the shops had shut, so we couldn't go and get some bungs. But today, I managed to get a bung from uh, a local hardware store, uh, which is a 15 mil bung that has plugged up the top hose there. I've used thread locker, a thread sealer, I should say, on the, on the threads, just because it is quite a deep thread and I don't want anything leaping through. And on the bottom one, I ended up using a 14 mil sump plug. Um, but I will put a link to those down below so you can have them prepped ready before you attack it. But now we have ample room. And I'll just show you from the bottom. There, I hope the camera's picking that up. But yeah, so we've got the factory cooler lines going into the BMP fittings, into the adapter, into the dash 10, and into there. Now, some people may be wondering why I've gone with Dash 10 hose. Uh, one reason was it was cheaper to get a Dash 10 kit with the fittings than it was for Dash 8. And also the transmission, uh, sorry, the, the, the cooler itself has Dash 10 fittings on it. So it's just gonna be cheaper, but yeah, I'm kind of interested to see how this thicker hose is gonna work. Anyway. Moment of truth. It's about to put, we haven't actually put the fan shroud in, but hopefully. Everything, well, fingers crossed, because now everything is in place. It's locked in, mounted. Everything's thread sealed. So yeah. if, that fan, if that fan doesn't fit in now, we're in trouble. I'm gonna be... But it looks good, to be fair, doesn't it? It yeah. looks good. It's heaps of, I mean, there's, there's more room now than when you've got the factory cooler in there. So, all right, let's get it slid in. Mm. Wee. on something. Yep, it's just the inner cooler. Is that nagged on something again? Something over the... Oh, it's just the trans lines, that's all. Oh really? The front of it's hitting that already? Yeah. Oh, ow, oh, uh, your finger. <sighs> Alright, we are getting there. That is in place. So that's the fan shroud now just about in place. You can see I've taped the hoses to the coolant line here. That's not overly tight but it's just to make sure they don't move around too much and I also put a cable tie around the two transmission lines there and you probably can't see from this angle but it's just holding that coolant line. Now there's a bolt or a heavy bolt in the end of this coolant line. I didn't want it coming back and then hitting the Police. harmonic balancer or getting caught in the cable you might be able to see some coolant around there because we did have the coolant lines open i've ended up doing a full coolant flush which also ended up taking about three hours and that's why we have coolant all over the shop um 
But dude, she's in. We've got room. All right, I think we need to fit up the rest of the shroud and just check fitment again. Cool. We have here the final sort of assembly of how everything's gonna sit. We ended up with more than enough room between the bottom of the cooler and the bottom of the spa splash guard. So if we do accidentally bump any driveways or anything, we've got a good inch of compression before it'll be hitting the oil cooler itself. Yeah, got all the ducts back in place on both sides. And but yeah, everything's gonna sit down there. This is the first time I've ever used AN fittings and I did manage to absolutely destroy the first one cosmetically when I put it on, which is a bit annoying, but very impressed with them. Crash bars back in place. I think it's time to put the front bar back on. Yeah, and actually speaking of your, your mounting for the oil cooler, trans cooler, it's actually higher than the intercooler, which yeah. sits further forward. So you'd be very, you'd have to, you're gonna have a big crash if you, if you hit that. Anything to impact and cause a leak. Yeah. All right. Dude, I'm getting excited to get to drive it again. It's been a week. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get this bar on. Okay, now because the trans cooler is on the passenger side of the car, there is no, well, there's a space for it, but there's no real airflow to it. But as you can see on the back of the front bumper bar, the next to the passenger side fog light, it just has this big extra plastic block out panel that sits behind that grill. So, as we have the oil cooler sitting there now, we've just removed that, we're just a few, a few bolts to pull the whole assembly out, and we're just gonna trim, trim along there to remove that excess, and then it will still bolt in as normal, and it will just then resemble the driver's side, which, um, which yeah, obviously already has a oil cooler in there, but that will give direct airflow straight to the new trans cooler. Okay, so that's how it turned out, literally took two seconds to just cut across there with a hacksaw. Um, doesn't look too messy, but I will just hit it with a file to clean it up a little bit. And that will just mount back in there. And then you've got airflow, that looks good. So she's all finished. Yes. And finally. it's all it's all nice and warm. We've got everything up to full running temperature and pressures and no leaks. Ah, actually one leak. One little leak. The, Not necessarily our fault. Well, it could have been. I should have checked them, but the Allen key on the BMP fitting obviously wasn't nipped up quite enough because it was weeping a little oil, a little bit of oil once it got up to temp. Um, what do we need to tell these guys about if they're gonna try and do what we've done today? Okay, well, wanna, over two days. One hundred percent delete the heat exchanger. Yeah, this this yesterday, trying to leave this in place and then fit the hose, fit the two oil cooler hoses around that big inner cooler, uh, it just wasn't going to happen. And it might it might be doable if you don't have the 7.5 inch intercooler, but because of that big extra charge pipe, it's just not possible. It looks possible. We tried multiple times, different routes. And don't get me wrong, you could get it all in there, but it, things are just too tight and they're going to rub and it's just not good. Yeah, it's close to the pulleys there, it's just not, not worth it. Yeah, we even tried cutting off fittings to yeah. make things work, but it was just, just get rid of this, use the bungs. Yeah, get some cheap bungs and it's easier to, to delete then. Um, I'm going to double check the packets, but I think I've used a 15 mil bung and a 14 mil bung, and that was just due to where I cut the rubber hoses down. Um, but yeah, but aside from that, if you buy the same parts that we bought, this would actually be quite easy. And pretty cheap as well. Yeah, uh, I've still got like f f four meters of the uh, AN fitting, yes, the AN hose, the dash 10 hose. Plus a heap of fittings left. Six fittings left. So I'll try and reuse that to do an oil cooler upgrade later on. That's, that's gonna be pretty good. And I think this is gonna work quite well. I think it will as well. After cutting the blanking plate off from this front grill as well, you can actually see the oil cooler from the front. So it's gonna get pretty good airflow. I think it's gonna work brilliantly. All that's left really is to do some stress testing once the rain buggers off. Yeah, so we'll have to wait for that, but I've got to ask about the orange wheels as well. I wasn't gonna tell them about that yet. Uh, I've had an issue with some vibrations in this car and they come and go and it's been a bit weird the whole time I've had it. And I've, I've bit the bullet and I've got some other wheels to see if it sorts out the problem. As soon as I can work out what it is, I will give them an update. Uh, actually, speaking of updates, my injectors have arrived. <sighs> Finally. Yes, um, the injectors I ordered the second week of January finally landed in Australia, so I should have them by the end of the week, which means we can finally get the port injection on. Ooh. So this weekend, it'll be port injection? Yeah, port injection, walnut blasting, um, basically make sure the port injection is working properly. Yep. Um, and I'm basically, as soon as I'm happy that the, that system is working as it should with the extra fuel pump, got to do that as well. Yes. Um, it will be all go to actually bolt the turbos on, the new turbos. Ooh. 
going to be an exciting couple of weeks. That will be awesome. She's going to be a weapon. Make sure you subscribe if you're not ready, if you want to see this thing with some big Wuhan whirly boys on there, because she's going to be beast. And one other thing I just remembered about fitting the oil cooler. Yes. Don't forget to check the transmission level as well after it's fitted. Ah, oh, nearly forgot that, yeah. Yeah, we, we added nearly a, well, actually it was over a litre of fluid to fill that up properly. Yeah, and that was, and you actually filled the trans cooler as well before it's bolted in, so do. yeah, don't take any shortcuts, just check the level. I think that's about it. All right, guys, look, thank you very much for watching. See you on the next one.